versus long term. Look, near term, it's inflation. <laughs> and what governments are doing to, to uh, combat inflation and how it's impacting the markets and how it's ultimately impacting their businesses. Um, I think that's all anyone is, is trying to figure out. Yeah, no, it's a very good question. So as you, as you read, we're a global consulting firm focused on helping companies uh, manage crises, manage transactions, think about business transformation. Um, and we do that globally. So we've been visiting Korea uh, and Korean business partners and, and potential partners, helping them understand how we can help them uh, in, in other markets and at the same time help U.S. and European companies um, address issues in the, uh, the Korean market. Yep, no, it's a very good question. Uh, and, and you're absolutely right. The M&A market has been really challenged. Uh, rising interest rates, I think, are, are just one of many challenges. Uh, you also have a more um, activist antitrust market and increased protectionism, not just in the U.S., but globally. So getting deals done has become more difficult, uh, particularly cross-border deals. So what, what I think you'll see is more um, in-country deals, um, local deals uh, happening. One of the bright spots, though, has been actually, I think, the strong dollar. And so the strong dollar might actually make um, companies outside the U.S. attractive targets for U.S. companies. Yeah. Um, but, the, but ultimately, um, interest rates are, are, are weighing heavily on companies' ability to do deals, yeah. raise financing to get those transactions. There's a ton of cash sitting on the sidelines waiting for some of the uncertainty to take place. Yeah. Um, could it happen in, later on in 23? Maybe more likely 24, if not 25, and that's when you'll see transaction volumes start to pick up. Yeah. I think what's weighing on the markets just as much is um, increased regulation and protectionism um, mm -hmm. ac across the board. And so, for companies looking to do deals, I think they're going to have to think regionally yeah. um, in terms of certain industries where there'll be less protectionism, consumer. Uh, um, certain industrials. Uh, I, think, I think when you get into certain technologies, artificial intelligence, um, semiconductor production, those are going to be very difficult to do transactions in over the near term. Um, not because of liquidity, but because of increased protectionism. Um, so other, other industries I think will be more attractive. Um, uh, perhaps transportation, perhaps consumer goods, um, where, where I think not only the liquidity will be there, but you'll have governments um, more willing to um, allow those, those businesses to move forward. Yeah. Look, I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. We've been through a, a liquidity bubble, um, and it hasn't just been within the last two or three years. It's been building for, for many, many years. From time to time, there's always a reset. Uh, and I actually think that creates opportunities for even some of the tech businesses uh, who saw extreme valuations. They've now been normalized. I think normalizing of valuations is good for the market and good for growth. And so my, what I would say to uh, companies that, that are experiencing that transition um, and have, have now reset their valuation, this is an opportunity for them. Focus on growth, focus on organic growth, um, less on financial engineering and, and building market share and growing their business in a sustainable way uh, over the long term, um, and, and that will create opportunities. Not only is that right, I'd go one step further. That's true of any company. Uh, focusing on long-term growth investment in the business rather than fin short-term financial goals is always the best bet for any company. Yeah, I, I think Look, cutting back on your workforce is always an unfortunate um, uh, reality to companies who are managing through a liquidity crisis, evaluation issues, um, uh, uh, but sometimes it's a, it's a necessary uh, event that, that companies have to take. I think the opportunity for those companies that are um, uh, reducing their workforces and the reason they're doing it is to better focus the business over the long term. I think, I think when, you, when you go through that liquidity bubble that you talked about earlier, I think companies have spread themselves over too many initiatives and, and have, have lost track of what their strategic 
objective ought to be. Financial tightening really forces uh, a company to think about its strategic vision and long-term growth goals. I think that's what they're going through. Return to a normal, that's right. 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 That's right. Look, I think when those companies went public, they had a very clear direction on where they were headed. Yeah. Um, I think when, in an era where there's easy money yeah. um, and it's, it's very easy to raise capital, mm -hmm. I, think, I think companies um, lose track of that focus. Yeah. Um, this is a moment to reset, um, set really clear goals over the next couple of years, yeah. perform, focus on growth, and deliver for not just shareholders, but also their employees and their, and their customers. Yeah. Versus long term, look, near term, it's inflation, inflation. <laughs> and what governments are doing to, to uh, combat inflation and how it's impacting the markets and how it's ultimately impacting their businesses. Um, I think that's all anyone is, is trying to figure out, whether you're in financial services, whether you're in energy, healthcare, yeah. uh, tech, and, and telecom. I think, I think uh, um, that's, that's the near-term concern that everyone's talking about. Long-term, I think it's sustainable growth. Sustainable growth, sustainable growth in terms of um, uh, energy transition, in terms of, of building viable businesses that, that, that have continued growth year over year um, so that they can survive business cycles in a much more uh, rational way.